Welcome man. Welcome back to the channel guys. Real quick. Let me show y'all. I get here this morning. There's some parts laying in my floor. <laughs> Just sitting in the floor guys. Y'all know what this is. This is a rack and pinion ladies and gentlemen. Now y'all remember that 06. Uh, the hell? Y'all remember that 06 Chrysler 300 that I brought in. Had the bent uh, tie rod in. Remember I was telling you it's too dangerous to drive your car like this. Uh, I was matter of fact, I'm gonna put a piece of the video clip right here. Look at that. That broke. No, you ain't. This rack is a. Uh, what about the side? Yeah, you can't move that side. So, well, uh, this is what they got me, guys. It's not an OEM. It's not new. It's an aftermarket remand. But when the aftermarket or when the insurance company is trying to save as much money as possible, this might be what you get. <laughs> now, on an OEM, I will likely have gotten a rack already equipped with tie rod. So in this case, they had to get me some uh, tie rod in. Y'all know why these tie rods look like this, right? Uh, we went over that last time. Because it's an all-wheel drive vehicle. An all-wheel drive rack and pinion, they had to mount the rack to the rear of the cradle. Okay, so I got two two tie rods, and they sold some gravy also. So I'm going to do a real diff service and power steering flush. All right, this car got a lot of miles on it, so it needs some maintenance. And also, I remember I had two tires, guys, because remember, when you ride like that, if tie rod is bent, you're going to affect toe. And toe was way off, so she just kept driving like that. She even drove to the shop like that. So you can imagine how much toe wear that tire hair has accumulated. Okay, so guys, rack and pinion is super easy. All right, now I haven't done one on a while, in a while, on an all wheel drive. It's not much different, it don't look much different. However, I will have to set toe. You pretty much have to do toe anyway, or you should if uh, you get a new rack. Now I told y'all last time, the OEM racks, with the tie rods already on them, sometimes they can be automatically set. But no two cars are perfect. No two frames are perfect. So when you bolt it to the car, you may be off. Okay, not the toe itself, but the the way it's built. No two cars are the same, guys. So they can't. They, they should advocate that you do an alignment, no matter if tie rods supposedly set at the factory or not. All right, so this is the 06. Let me show y'all some of the major difference in. Remember, see how these tie rods are built? They got a curve to them. All right, now I have a 06 in my stall right now. Let's take a look at some. All right, this is a uh, 06 Charger, the one we're getting ready to work on, the 06 300. Y'all see how this one's in the front of the cradle? And see the tie rods are not built like the one. The three, the Chargers and the 300 have the, pretty much the same suspension. Uh, I guess based off if they're all-wheel drive or not. Okay, that's a difference. But yeah, this rack is super easy. And the good part about it, you don't have to go under the steering wheel to remove the uh, the nut, the uh, flange nut from the rack. Okay, because it's down underneath the car. So it's the same with that 300. So I'm going to take that off, take off all the connections to the rack. And the rack just fall down. Uh, of course, be mindful. Of, that's why I'm doing a power steering flush. I'm going to flush out all the old fluid and go in with new fluid. And, of course, the tie rods. Y'all see the difference? Notice the difference in tie rods on this car. A charger as opposed to a 300 all-wheel drive. That whole suspension is <laughs> right here. All right. So, let me go bring this car in and get to work, guys. Like I say, it's fairly easy. I might just set the camera down just so... For entertainment purposes, some people like to see this. And again, I will have to align it. So let me go. I got work to do, guys. Uh, let me go to a quick break. I'll be right back. We got to get this rack out of here. Let's get it. All right, guys. I have it up in the air. It's time to get busy, man. Now, y'all see what I was talking about, how easy this is. Bzz, bzz. Oh, first, untake the uh, coupler off. Right there, that's looking like a 13 millimeter. Bzz, bzz. Oh, we gotta get the lines off. Where's my power steering lines? They're attached to the rack right here. 
right here okay so grab your 18 of course the wheels got to come off so you can gain access to the tie rod and this sucker would just fall yes all-wheel drive i i got a couple of subscribers got a these all-wheel drive 300 i'm no big fan of all-wheel drive man just too much stuff to go wrong and break for not that much advantage to having in the first place okay the advantage of having it has to outweigh <laughs> in my opinion i mean everybody has their own take on it but yeah they had to mount this rack on this side of the cradle because of a way to get axles to the front now okay and you notice guys it's a nag transmission let's go back over to this charger and let's take a look at something see this is a nag transmission like i say the suspension is normally the same if it wasn't equipped with all-wheel drive on that car the all-wheel drive all of this is filled up it's an axle going a drive shaft going straight through here and a ptu bolted right here to accomplish that feat but on this car the rack and pinion is this way and even easier than that one so in other words they're both easy all right so y'all ready man let's get to work let's get back over here and get to freaking work let me grab me some tools another set of gloves and uh let's get it all right guys i'm at the point to now i, I want to take the uh, the power steering lines off first and i'm at the point i can't i, I feel some telling me to whip out the camera right now i can't get this damn thing loose it feel like i'm about to it's an 18 millimeter head i'm sure it's an 18 this is an 18 millimeter wrench okay so i'm about to round it off guys that is the last thing you want to do is round it off see you can see my 18 what's what's right below 18 probably 17 now 17 not going to get on there maybe 11 16 or what is it 11 16 what is the standard 17 and 11 16 or something like that is standard damn i can't even remember but anyway i might, might have to go down one notch but even if i go down on the wrench it's not gonna fit on the head 18 is what size it is but i'm loose right now and as i try to turn oh i feel like i'm about to round it off all right uh here's what i'm gonna do first i'm gonna soak this i'm gonna spray some uh rust penetration down here or on it so it can try to soak hold tight guys yeah let's get some of this now what you need is like a flare wrench line wrench and <laughs> for the life of me i don't have any well i don't have an 18 line wrench so i have do have however have my crow foot okay so let me put this crow foot on this ratchet and see if the little crow foot y'all familiar with and it's a line type crow foot it's not a straight crow foot the thinking goes guys we want something on every corner all right this is a six point so i need some turning force on every corner of this of this line so it will not round off chances of it rounding off is slim if you biting on all six corners all right let me try i don't know this might be too big uh not it's the right okay hold on i'm talking too much all right i'm on here oh wish me luck guys i'm about to give it a heart oh shit why is this sucker on so tight can i is that a better anger no i still got it hold on Oh, uh oh, oh shit, we on to something. Hold on, guys. That rust penetration is down in there. Oh, yes. Okay. I didn't know if I was going to jack it up. If it was going to jack up, I wanted it on camp, on film, guys. If it was going to round off. Over time, these little. Everything under this car just get rusted and soft. For some reason yeah i'm turning now all right i hope if i'm turning enough yeah heck i'm the fluid all right guys i will proceed i just wanted to make sure nothing happened and i not have it documented okay 
I try to document all my potential problem issues so I have it. So I can cover my butt. Alright, I need to grab a drain bucket and I'm going to proceed with this repairs, guys. Alright, let's get it, man. Alright guys, I got it out as you can see. Uh, it was fairly easy as I mentioned earlier. Only thing is guys, this is why I hate aftermarket stuff, man. Uh not saying that you know it don't work. I have nothing against who make this Supreme Chancy Parts, Mevo Tech. I have nothing against them. And I ain't even sure they supplied the rack. They just supplied the tie rod ends. But look guys, what you gotta transfer off of the old rack. You shouldn't have to transfer anything. What if this was damaged? Or what if you didn't have <laughs> a rack at all? Okay, but look what I may have to transfer just because I don't have them. Of all things, this damn nut right here. Okay, now you would think they'd come with the tie wires, right? I got one open, getting ready to put it on. No nut. Hmm, maybe they just forgot the package. I go to the new one, the other side. This is sealed up. This bag is sealed up no nuts in here so which tells me they don't supply the nuts <laughs> so are you telling me i gotta break this old rag down just to get the freaking oh my goodness that's why i mean i gotta go find a vice i gotta put this in a vice and bust this down just to take off the nut to put on here ah oh, this is what drive me crazy man now you already know you gotta align it right so the thinking goes in order to uh, get it as close as possible. Simply count the threads, guys. So one, two. That's a bunch of them. Let's count it and try to. You're not going to be perfect. You're merely going to come close, so your wheels will not be, toe will not be way out. Before, see, I got a little, nice little dry to get to the alignment machine. I don't want to wear out the tires, or make it worse. Let me look through this box. Maybe some nuts in here. Nope, no nuts, guys. I'm screwed. <laughs> I got to take this off. I gotta take the old one off, but uh, that's it, guys. I'm gonna wrap this video up because now I'm frustrated, uh, and you guys shouldn't suffer because I'm frustrated. But this is just time consuming. I didn't factor this, factor this labor time in for busting down these, um, busting down this rack. I didn't think I would have to bust down the rack. The freaking tie rod should come with the nuts, or oh, I should have got a OEM. Let me stop crying about that because. JT, you know insurance companies do not pay. Guys, speaking of insurance company, uh, there might be some ways you can get your... If your suspension damage was a, uh, happened because of like something in the road or something out of your control, that is an insurance claim. You know, in some cases, I remember the Jeep I had with the wheel bent. He got that fixed under his insurance. He got full coverage insurance, so they, they, they approved it and, and paid for it. So before you go breaking the bank see if you'll now that will add to your claims see this is bent so what ha what causes this something had to happen oh this one's gonna be easy this one's already turning oh cool all right so i just had to fight with this one but some cases insurance company they want the cheapest parts possible with a warranty so you might have got a one-year warranty out of this but it's considered reman brand new or reman all right guys <laughs> Let me put both all this stuff up to get this back on the car and go align it and we gonna go from there. They should about wrap it up on this video guys. Y'all know I hate them real long videos. But uh, that's all I have. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all in the next video.